Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We're gonna create a photo grid and I'm gonna show you how to do it very quickly and efficiently. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So I already have a composition. I have a background with a gradient ramp and I already have some footage in here. So you can do this with video or photos or even with text, whatever you wanna do, you know, you can easily do this. So what we're gonna do is we have our video right here and we want to create our grid right off the start. So we're going to grab the rectangle tool. We're just going to draw out a nice rectangle, kind of like this nice thin rectangle like so. And we're going to click on the word add and we're going to add a repeater. And we're going to the repeater one. We're going to go into the transform repeater one and we're going to increase the X position. So it should be about, you know, maybe three, 400 around there. Maybe a little bit less than that, like right there. And you kind of break it up until you have like nice gaps. And we're going to increase the number of copies to six. And this is where we want to kind of redo everything so we can kind of have a nice even plane across the field here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our rectangle one and make sure it's moved over a little bit. And we're going to increase the size of the rectangle until we go all the way across our comp here. And that should be good. And this should be good. So we have six little pieces here. And of course you can create a more specific grid, but we're gonna go with this style. And what we're gonna do is select our video here. We can turn it back on or whatever. So here's our video. So what we can do is toggle switch to the modes until we see the track mat. And for the video or photo layer, set the track mat to alpha mat. So our video photo will actually, you know, basically paste it on our grid here. And what we're gonna do now is, you know, select both of these layers here, the grid and the shape layer. And we're gonna pre-compose it by going up to layer, pre-compose and we can call it you know images or whatever and click OK or actually we call it placeholder but that's okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to separate this with mask so we're going to grab the rectangle tool and we're going to just draw out like a thin you know rectangle like this and we'll create the mask as so and what we'll do is we'll kind of like refine this mask so it's only taking up the actual rectangle here so we can easily duplicate this and that should be okay and let's go here and let's duplicate the image layer here and let's hit M on our keyboard. Let's select the mask here and let's bring this mask over and let's grab the second segment here. And let's continue to duplicate this until we have each of our rectangles or our grids isolated. And the reason why we're doing it this way in, you know, chopping up in individual layers is so we have full control over each of the layers so we can do whatever type of animation that we want to do. And it's just a little bit easier to go with this way. And you go up to edit duplicate and you know, I got to make a habit of not forgetting uh, the you know menus for this. Okay, so now we have each of these layers isolated. Let's go ahead and just rename them. So go one, two, three, and so forth. And now that these layers are isolated, we can turn off the actual mask button here by clicking this uh, button next to the crosshair and we can start animating each of these layers. So, so what we can do is select all of our layers, hit P on keyboard for position, add a keyframe for position, and we'll move these keyframes forward in time maybe by like a second. And let's come here to like number four, or let's go to number three, and let's just go to the Y position and we'll have this animate off screen like this. And therefore we'll have something like boom, like down like that, it's great. And then we'll go to like number four, we'll bring this one you know, down here and go to like five, do the same thing. Oh, go to five, we'll do the same exact thing. Maybe we'll, now we'll go to like, you know, six, two, you know, kind of just do like a cool little animation and go here to one. So now we have what I like to call the teeth closing animation. And we'll go to here to like five seconds so now we're gonna create a little bit more of a dynamic animation and kind of offset things just by a little bit. And of course you can stop here if this is what you like. But let's go here to like the third layer here and let's just continue to animate this layer downwards by a little bit and go to like layer four, animate that up and go to five, animate that down. Same thing with six, go to two. You know, kind of, you get what I'm saying here. So what's gonna happen here is all these layers are gonna come in and they're gonna continue to animate Okay, and now we can go to like six seconds here, and then we can go ahead and animate this all off. So what we can do is just copy the first keyframe here and paste it and paste all these first keyframes in here so these will continue to animate off. So it'd be pretty interesting. So we'll have our animation and it'll come off just like this. That looks great. And of course we can make all these keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And of course when we come through here, it's just like, you know, so as we can see, it all comes on at the same time and I don't really want that. So what we can do is kind of offset the keyframes just by a little bit 
you know, kind of make it variate the scene just by a touch. And then maybe I'll just offset these keyframes at the end here. We'll maybe make it to eight seconds. Okay, awesome. And now what's great about doing it in this way is if we go ahead and go into our, you know, original composition, we can come in here and we can, you know, bring in some new footage. So like we want to bring in like a photo instead. It's automatically going to be swappable. So in our main composition here, we can easily swap things out without a problem. This is why we want to set it up this way so we can easily, you know, change things later. So select all of our layers here, all of our comps at least. Go up to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call it full scene. Click OK. And I want to create a little bit of like a multi-camera, you know, angle here to kind of spice this up, make it a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is we'll start off with the wide shot here. And as soon as this comes in here, let's go up to make sure the layer is selected. Go up to edit, split layer. And what we're going to do here is scale this one in kind of like so. Maybe we'll even position it down by a touch. So we'll kind of jump into like a tight shot. So it makes it a little bit more interesting in my opinion. And then maybe we'll go by like almost by a second here, split this layer. Maybe we'll zoom it out, reposition it. And we'll have this up for like maybe like a second or so. Let's put this layer and then we'll go into the transform properties here and click on reset. So now we'll have like this tight shot to more of a medium shot. And then we'll go back to the full scene and it'll just create a little bit more of a rhythm. So before we wrap this video, I want to talk about one major issue that's happening in this project right now, and it probably has happened to other of your projects and will happen in the future. So if we scroll through here, you'll see that our animation is going up, it's going up, it's going up, and then you know what? It is going to start going the other direction, which is a boomerang effect. And as you can see, we only have one you know path of this animation, and so it shouldn't be doing like a you know a kind of a going one direction and then going the other direction. And you'll get that with a lot of situations. So what we need to do is select all these keyframes. So right click one of the keyframes and click on keyframe interpolation. I can't even say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and let's go to spatial interpolation. Can't even say it. I hope I'm saying it. I don't even know. I'm not going to pronounce it right now. And set it to linear. Click OK. And that extra boomerang effect is going to be completely gone. And this is not going to be you know blown out of proportion. So this looks really good and go ahead and set your out point at the end of the animation and render it out. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And you know, very cool little way to spice things up in this nice little photo grid. So hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you guys did, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this, and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.